Monkeys, love them or hate them, they're one of the most interesting animals in the animal kingdom. The film industry thought that too, so they decided to make movies about them. But not just any movie, movies where they are the scariest things known to man. Big monkeys, small monkeys, apes, even Bigfoot. You name them, I'm talking about them. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Monkey Man. For the first episode of Monkey Mayhem, I wanted to go back where the trend started. But it's hard because there isn't a lot of sources as to when the first killer monkey movie was. It could be some German silent film that three people have seen, or just some random documentary. But for me, I'm going to choose the film Murders in the Rue Morgue, released in 1932. Directed by Robert Florey and starring a bunch of dead people I don't know about besides Bela Lugosi, it was made after the success of Dracula, and studios wanted to have Lugosi play the villain in every sh** horror movie that they got their hands on. While a very good actor and good in a lot of movies before and beyond this point, he was in a lot of garbage, some that we'll definitely be looking at in the future. But today, I want to look at this gothic chiller that's kind of like the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, but with a monkey instead of a zombie. Let's start, shall we? Also, for further context, I never read the short story this is based off of, so I'm, if I make fun of something from the story, I apologize. The movie begins with a credit scene that has the exact same Swan Lake music as the original Dracula? <laughs> I guess it just kind of shows how cheap studios were at the time to literally take the same song and see if no one would notice. Next we cut to Paris 1845 where a bunch of people are gathered up to a party or some get together, I'm not sure. We see a bunch of racist stereotypes of Egyptians and natives that show that, oh yeah, this is a movie made in 1932. Pierre, how brown they are. Isn't they real color, do you suppose? Or have they painted themselves? Shall I find out for you? Jesus after that, the doors with an amazing monkey design open for this exhibit, where Bela Lugosi and an ape are. This is how the monkey is for the rest of the movie. In wides, we see that it's obviously a man in a gorilla costume, and then other times it's just stock footage of a monkey doing its business. Also, Lugosi's name is supposed to be Dr. Miracle, but for the sake of this review, I'm just gonna call him Lugosi because literally it's just all of his other roles with a different coat of paint. Anyways, the people gather in and seem to be horrified by this ape, who by the way is named Eric. What's the matter, Eric? Are you restless? I know, very intimidating. As people gawk at the sight of the ape, Lugosi quiets them down with this amazing monologue. <laughs> they are only a trap. To catch the perils of fools. My life is consecrated to great experiment. I tell you I will prove your kinship with the ape. The acting in this movie is pretty bad for the most part, but anytime Lugosi is on screen, he's amazing. Heresy! Harrison. Harrison. Do they still burn men for heresy? Then burn me, monsieur. Light the fire. After this, we see what Lugosi's sinister plans are. He travels across Paris with Eric and this random hunchback assistant, who only has one line in the whole movie. Police! Lugosi then finds a girl screaming as we get to see one of the most intense fight scenes in cinematic history. As the fight ends, Lugosi gets all creepy and asks this girl to come with him. Obviously terrified of this, she screams and Lugosi and the assistant kidnap her. From there we see Lugosi's plans, which I'm gonna be real, make literally no sense. He's trying to kidnap and torture random women on the street in order to mix their blood with the blood of the apes? And through his mind this will cause the blood to mix for them to become ape men? But they're women, so wouldn't it be ape women? I don't know, his plan makes no Sense. If the ape's blood melds with the blood of the woman's, it won't do anything. Anyway, this girl dies and Lugosi throws her body down the door that Ruka fell through in Willy Wonka. From there, we follow Pierre for a large majority of the film and unfortunately Lugosi takes a back seat for a large majority of the runtime. We see Pierre do tests on blood, spew corny dialogue with his girlfriend. You're like a song the girls of Provence sing on May Day. And like the dancing in Normandy on May Day. 
And like the wine in Burgundy on May Day. Oh, Camille, I love you. And I love you too, Pierre. And deal with his friend who's some really bad comedic relief. You give five francs to that old ghoul down at the morgue and, and I have to turn magician and pull a loaf of bread out of my nose so we can eat. We got a musical part where they're singing to this girl out her window. And they all go to this retreat in the middle of nowhere and talk about random stuff. I will say the shot of the girl going on the swing is pretty unique for a film from 1932, even though it does make me nauseous. <laughs> Pierre starts to learn more about Lugosi's trails to where he becomes very suspicious until it becomes too late when Lugosi comes at her door and has the ape kidnap his girlfriend. Why didn't he just use his hunchback assistant? I'm not sure. Pierre finally discovers what Lugosi is doing, and it shocks him to the bone. Paul, Paul, wake up. Uh, where's wake the, up. Where's the man? Those women, don't you understand? They died because a gorilla's blood was injected into their veins. Couldn't have said it better myself. So now the hunt is on. The girl's been kidnapped, Pierre's on the run looking for her, and the authorities are looking for suspects. We get this painfully unfunny scene where these three dudes are trying to explain what Lugosi's accent was. And my god, it goes on forever. But it was not Danish. It was German. Italian. Mm, not German. Mm, Danish. German. Ich lege meine Hand auf Jürgens Feuer, dass es kein Deutscher war. Oh, no, no, we're not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not German. I'm not going to do it. 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 As soon as they find out it was Lugosi, the whole town goes on the search to find them. Lugosi soon discovers that her blood matches perfectly with the blood of the apes. Why? I honestly have no idea. But he discovers this. Back into your cage! Back to your cage! Eric! Lugosi dies like a b Also, the hunchback dude dies as well, but I doubt you cared about that guy anyways. So now the ape has taken the girl and it's proto King Kong, baby, as the town look in shock of this monkey carrying this girl across the dilapidated rooftops. And when I mean girl, I mean obvious fake dummy that he's carrying around. All right, so now the lead characters reached up to the rooftops. This is it, man versus monkey, who will win? <laughs> Uh, man, I guess. So the guy has got back with his girl, the authorities write off Lugosi as just some crazy person, and without losing the momentum, the movie just ends. Huh, that was a short movie. What was the length? Ah, oh, that makes sense. I know I've been trashing on this movie a lot, but honestly, I kind of enjoy it. The set design is really unique, barring a lot of German expressionism from the 20s and looking very gothic and spooky. And Lugosi's great for what he has. He controls every scene he's in and you can't take your eyes off him. I like how short the film is as well. There's no fillers, it's just short, sweet, and straight to the point. Which for these kinds of movies I'm going to be looking at, I'd much rather than something that seems overdrawn. Only things I don't fully like about it are the lead characters are super uninteresting and cliche, and some of the humor is quite weak. There shouldn't have been any to begin with. I'd personally give this film three monkeys out of five. It's not a great film, but an enjoyable B-movie. Now we gotta rate the monkey. Honestly, I feel the same way about Eric as I do the rest of the film. We don't get enough kill scenes to make it all worth the while, but it is super entertaining. Also, the fact that there's a guy in a monkey suit for half the movie makes the film all the more fun. I'll give it half a star more. I think I'll give it three and a half out of five. I think that'll be a good score. And that's it. Tune in next time to see more crazy monkey movies, and if you want to see my opinions on other films, follow my letterbox in the link below. See ya!